Welcome to the Altera online presentation, VHDL Basics. By the end of the presentation, you will be able to construct complete models using VHDL. You will be able to generate general logic functions and build hierarchical designs. We will begin this course with an overview of VHDL. Next, we will discuss design units within the language. This section includes the discussion of entities, architectures, configuration, and finally packages. We will then look at the language in more detail, studying the constructs used within the language to create models. These include, for example, constants, signals, and processes. Next, we will learn how VHDL code is synthesized and look at uh, some commonly used functions and how they're constructed. Finally, we will discuss designing hierarchically within the language. So let's start with an introduction to VHDL. VHDL stands for Very High Speed Integrated Circuit Hardware Description Language. It is an IEEE approved standard that we use to describe models for both simulation and synthesis purposes. For some terms that we're going to use throughout this presentation, the first is HDL. HDL stands for Hardware Description Language and it refers to using a text-based programming language to model a piece of hardware. There are two ways to do modeling with HDL, what we call behavioral modeling and structural modeling. Behavioral modeling is describing the component by means of its I.O. response whereas structural modeling is actually putting uh, building blocks together to, conform, to form a complete circuit. The term RTL, or Register Transfer Level, refers to a type of behavioral modeling. With RTL, the design is described in terms of register stages with combinatorial blocks of logic between them. Synthesis is the act of translating this text-based HDL into a circuit and then optimizing that circuit. And process, the process is the basic unit, unit of execution in VHDL. Behavior modeling is when we describe the functional, functionality of the circuit and we leave it up to the synthesis tool to build the structure meaning that based on the inputs I describe what the output should be doing and the actual logic function that performs it I leave it up to a synthesis tool to build. In the box you can see, you can see the example of some VHDL code. When the synthesis tool reads this VHDL code it understands the logic function I'm creating and actually creates the hardware based off of that. Now there are some constructs in the language that are used for synthesis and simulation, but other constructs are used only for simulation, as the after 5 nanoseconds is displayed there in red. A synthesis tool would have to ignore this, uh, that block of code. Structural modeling, but like behavior modeling, specifies the functionality of a circuit, but it also goes a step further and calls out for specific hardware implementation. Thus, you piece together lower level building blocks or components to actually build a higher level uh, structure. During RTL synthesis, code that is written is analyzed and equivalent logic structures are generated. So in the upper left, you can see a process block with a case statement inside. When coding this case statement, the logic I'm seeking is a 4-input MUX. The synthesis tool, recognizing the case statement structure, performs two steps, translation and optimization. During translation, the synthesis tool directly translates the HDL code into a gate implementation. During the optimization step, the synthesis tool then tries to improve the logic by making it smaller or faster. So, for example, to make the logic smaller, it may try to remove redundant logic. Or, to make it faster, it may try adding some parallel structures to it. VHDL is a higher level de design language similar to Verilog. 
With VHDL, I describe the function I want, and the synthesis tool tries to generate it for me. For example, if I described a circuit whose output only changes when a particular input transitions from low to high, and when that transition occurs, the output is equal to another input until the next transition. The tool would recognize that description and provide or generate a positive edge trigger flip-flop. Other languages like ABLE, a AHDL are more structural. With those languages, you actually specify you want a D flip-flop in your design and they build one for you. Though it may seem like VHDL takes more work to do simple things, it's that same flexibility that really makes it more powerful. Since I'm simply describing the functionality of the circuit and letting the synthesis tool build it for me, by changing a few lines of code, I can essentially drastically change the functionality of the design. Doing this with a structural language would require redesigning uh, large sections similar to redrawing a circuit diagram. The VHDL language consists of two sets of constructs, those that are user synthesis and those that are used for synthesis and simulation. It's a good idea to know which ones you're using to make sure you use the correct ones. The language is made up of reserved keywords like any other text-based design language, so those keywords must be used in specific uh, locations and they have uh, uh, reserved meanings. The language is not case sensitive so the capitalization does not matter. Now some operating systems you use may require case sensitivity but the language itself is not. All VHDL statements must be terminated with a semicolon and I'll repeat that again. All VHDL statements must be terminated with a semicolon. That's probably one of the single most common mistakes new users make, and even experienced users themselves. The language is white space insensitive, so I highly recommend that you use uh, tabs, spaces to align the code to make it more readable, not only for yourself, but also for others who have to read your code. Going through the, the material today, you should see some good examples of how blocks get lined up to improve the readability. And VHDL has um, commenting, and to do a commenting, you use double dashes. And then after the double dashes, anything from there to the end of the line is commented out. VH VHDL does not have a co block commenting capability like some other languages do. So every line must have two dashes if you want to comment. Now that being said, some text editors will do this automatically for you. So you just simply highlight the chunk of code, right click and select block comment and they will insert the double dashes in, in, in front of each line for you. When you compile or process your VHDL code, there are essentially two flows that you go through, the synthesis and the simulation flow. We'll start on the right with the simulation flow. With the simulation flow, you code your VHDL model, and using that model, you access built-in VHDL libraries. The simulation compiler then takes your model and your library and produces a simulation model. And then that simulation model is executed so that you can verify its functionality. Most simulators have some form of proprietary proprietary method that you can use to enter test vectors so you can actually test the code. But what also you can do with VHDL is you can write your test vectors or test bench in VHDL. So when the simulation compiler compiles your VHDL model, it's also compiling your test vectors in the form of the test bench so that they actually get written into the simulation model so that when you execute simulation you don't need test vectors in the simulator as the test vectors are actually built into the model. The results of simulation you can view in uh, various form forms. For example, you can view it in, in a text output or you can look at a waveform diagram to verify the functionality. When you do synthesis, 
The synthesis compiler takes the same model that you've written along with the same VHDL library and this time uses a technology library specific to the target device you're, that you're targeting with your code. And it compiles this model to create a netlist. Basically the netlist is your compiled uh, HDL or your logic built out of the technology specific to the device you're targeting. With that netlist, you can then go and, and analyze it for timing. You can take it and do place and route, which means to actually uh, fit it into the target device. And you can also do another level of simulation with the output of the synthesis tool. Again, you can use test vectors in the simulation tool to test the res your synthesis results. Or you can also, with many tools, generate a VHDL output netlist and then go through the flow on the right actually simulating the, the VHDL netlist or the synthesis results.